BRB UK. Worst teeth, better accents. Hello, hello, and indeed, ahoy, hoy, and welcome to this year' episode of BRB UK. It's episode 434. I am Dan. I am one of your hosts. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Lovely. Great. A bit uncomfortable, this, isn't it? it is yeah. Lovely. I'm going to introduce Coleman first this week. Hello, Coleman. Hi. How you doing? Uh, about 100% less concussed than last week. Excellent. Good. Good. That is good. It, does that make the show more enjoyable or less enjoyable? We'll need your opinion at the end. Oh, God. Well, considering I don't remember most of recording... And I also don't remember most of editing, and that concussion lasted about three days. Whoa, dude, did you <laughs> actually probably should have sought some help for that? Yeah, I know. Uh, I that that would be Re- the third no, concussion no, in my life. Real talk, so. seriously. Yeah, that's not cool. I know. I'm kind of avoiding hospitals and stuff at the minute, so I thought I'd be okay. I have got a better idea, Coleman. Yeah, yeah well, that's Avoid- Tim, by the way. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Avoid yep. falling bottles instead. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the better thing to avoid. Yeah, I fixed the cupboard. It's no if longer tilted. Only forward. we had an in-house doctor who could have told you to go to the hospital. To in my defence, I didn't realise I had a concussion until like a day later when I went. Hold on, this feels a lot like when I last had a concussion. Hang on, how did it get to Tuesday? Yeah, something like that. Where did the weekend go? I'm I'm a lot better now. Thank you. Okay, Get good. Set. All right. But seriously, next time things fall on head, mm-hmm. memories go walkabouts, go to hospital and wash yeah. your hands. Don't edit, go to hospital. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, then the show would have been late. And in fact, it went up an Which hour early. Which is fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much rather the show was late than yeah. the Coleman was not healthy. Well, anyway, uh, chaps, it's been another week. Uh, closer to some kind of end of lockdown, maybe, I don't know. Might happen, might not. I have now been working at home for a year. <laughs> yeah. It's not... I'm. It, I is actually starting to slightly bother me. It's not fun. Well, I think the problem is, because like my relax time is in front of a computer, as well as mm. work time being in front of the computer, and I'm just going slowly insane, I think. <laughs> yeah, I... At the moment, the only I, I go to three places: it's home, supermarket, and office. Those are the only <laughs> places in my life, and it has been that way for the last year. And at this point, like I'm getting messages from mates going, "Oh, I can't wait to go to the pub. You're up for going to the pub? Let's go to the pub." And I'm going, "Do you know what? I can't wait to like walk around an IKEA." <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> go clothes it's shopping. Simple things. I'm See, just... Coleman, you don't have the problem that me and Dan have so much in this regard, but I cannot wait for barbers to reopen. <laughs> Yes, I have got <laughs> that's a that's serious, thankfully it's slightly covered by uh, the joys of, of focal length here, but I've got a serious mullet situation going on at the moment. It's not great. It is not good. Uh, yeah. Seriously, and like if I took a hair from my quiffy thing at the top here, that was quiffy thing, by the way, I, I, I could get it down to my bottom lip. <laughs> oh my it's heart bleeds but I also know that I'm probably a bit more bald than the last time I had a haircut so it's going to be a real shock to the system as I go, wow that's a lot of scalp I can see all the hair to note to can no, I come with no you just for a laugh just so I can go oh, I remember those days I remember when that one was happening to me <laughs> thanks Carl man that's alright buddy Anytime. thanks Carl man so anyway we ought to talk about what we have been up to in chaps I've been running some experiments. Oh, I've strapped something that to my me. face. That sounds bad. I've strapped for you on the videos. Videos is is. I have strapped this to my <sighs> face. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, an Ocul- it's an Oculus Quest Two. I thought. Yeah. I, I, you guys have been banging on about VR for more longer than I care to really, frankly, bear. Some so, more than others. You said a, you were going to hold out for AR, so that didn't entirely work out. Then, no? Yeah, well, I still think AR is the future, but I, I figured 
just because, because actually what, what really what bizarrely what slightly tipped my hand towards it was wanting to see something different in stereo like it's actual escapism yeah it's really good for like I I haven't used it so much since getting the PS5 because I haven't hooked it up to the PS5 yet. I keep on going. I'll do that this week and then not doing it. But I'll um, look at the breakout box yeah, and go. At the first part, first part of lockdown when I was not leaving the house at all and not going anywhere at all, it was really nice to get that change of scenery. Basically, so yeah, yeah. But can, but anyway, it's very early days. I've had a little play about with it so far. It seems quite cool. The the head tracking is pretty impressive and pretty accurate. It seems. Um, Linking up to the PC at the moment, not so much. No. Oh. It's very, 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 very juddery. Um, like it keeps dropping frames left, right, and center, and you can kind of um, get a performance overlay up on the screen, which shows that my performance headroom is about minus a hundred percent most of the time. Right. Which clearly something ain't right. Um so I'm you know to be fair, um, before I pass judgment on it, I'm giving Oculus a chance to sort it out via tech support rather than me make any rash judgments. Uh, and it is hooked up via a compatible USB 3 cable. But um, they uh, I, they were kind of still at the stage of, can you, can you not run any other programs on the computer and unplug all of the USB devices stage, which is common. I'm not sure if your PC is anything like mine, but it's kind of in... Uh, what it, it kind of I've got it set up just how I like it, and I really don't want to be unplugging all of the things, but I will over the weekend. I'm, well, uh, because I seem to be in this thing of lock since we've been in lockdown, uh, I think once every two months I disconnect everything from my desk and then set it all back up again in the way I like well, just, it, just for something to do. I think it's part of that, but. Yeah, I um, because I I fitted a, a new Elgato into my uh, my PC not too long ago, and I remember I I was oh that was it. Someone from work went, oh, can you just? I know you're on lunch, but can you just do this? And then I took a photo of the inside of my PC because I currently had it in pieces, uh, switched off, and and they've gone, how bloody clean is your PC? I go, it's always clean because I seem to be taking everything apart every two months because I'm insane at the moment. Yeah. I really so, need to go out. <laughs> but real talk, real talk. Wash your hands, but also clean out your PC. Mm, yeah, should do. You Especially should do. If you got, like, you'd be amazed animals. what can what can live if you kind of blow out. I because I did it the other week. When I kind of um, do a bit of maintenance as you do. Um, sounded worse than it meant, I meant it to. Um, gave it a bit of a bit of a zhuzh with some compressed air. The amount of dust that came. Out of my graphics card was insane. Oh yeah, Anything that's after found. only I mean, about six weeks. Six consoles weeks. as well. Do do them. Especially like um, my girlfriend before he got the PS5. She's got the the old first edition PlayStation Four. And uh, when we first moved in together, I took a Hoover to that thing, and it just nothing was coming out the vents. And then I took it apart, and it was like a carpet of dust. <laughs> Nice. So anything with a fan, you've just got to compress, get some compressed air in that and, and sort it out. Yep. But anyway, so long story short, I have tried out some of the on-headset experiences. The reason why I went for a Quest 2 is it gives you a bit of flexibility. You can just... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The battery life, when it's not plugged into anything, pretty appalling, by the way. Uh, that's the only downside. But I'm looking forward to gaffer taping an anchor power bank to the back of my head to, <laughs> to fix that. Um you're going to look like Neo when he wakes up in the Matrix. Uh, exactly. That's what I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm pulling the um, thing out of your head. So, so, yeah, I mean, I had a little play about some stuff on the headset. Seems really good. Um, some really interesting community-made content on there as well. Um, hooked up to the PC. Not good times at the moment. But there might be. I don't know if the fault is with Oculus's stuff or with NVIDIA's drivers or a mixture of the two. So, I'll, before passing judgment, I'll let them do that. But... Weirdly, when hooked up to your PC via uh, the USB cable, doesn't seem to actually charge the headset at the same time. And there's only one USB port on the headset, so um, that seems a bit weird. That is very odd. That's very odd. Anyway, yeah. Adventures in VR! It does definitely looks like a good piece of kit, and you can definitely play some of the games that me and Coleman have been yeah, badgering you and boring you with, but... I, I mean, it's. I, I mean, it's obviously. Well, it's three hundred quid. It's not cheap. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, I don't. 
I'm still not 100% convinced. I really want to try it out, but I don't want to put... I mean, because the problem is the step up from the Quest 2 is quite a big jump up in terms of money. Yeah, yeah. And I really couldn't justify that at all. Um, so, you know, giving giving it giving it a go. And, um, yeah, it seems all right so far, I think. From, from the little bits I've played and from mates that have got them, they really rave about them and and yeah from the little way i played it, it looks like a really good piece of kit as you say battery life may be a concern but although i have had to find my old pair of glasses because they're smaller <laughs> not a lot of room not a lot of room but i might get some prescription lenses for vr i like the sort of one week after me saying i was going to get a quest 2 here are the reasons why i didn't you went i'm going to get a quest 2 and then also at the point where we look at uh, the UK is starting to lift restrictions on lockdown, you go, I'm going to get the thing that gets me pretend to be outside. <laughs> I, I live in the lockdown world now. I'm, I'm too scared to go out. Let me get virtual reality well, that, and that stay might indoors. Be it, you see. I want another year. <laughs> I'm going to reveal what I got this week. Ooh. And and it's in a similar white, bo- well, similar white box that you may have seen before. In some ways, equally as oh, impressive. Oh, is it an Ouya? He's got him a Stadia. <laughs> oh, you what? You've got Why one of the collector's that? edition ones. <laughs> one of the founder's editions. It was given to me by a, a mate of mine who we both know, David. Like, But um, yeah, uh, it, he could never get it working on his this thing. The, so the, I've, the same oh, story and, and since he thought, what, invoking the technological genius that is Tim was the way forward. <laughs> no, I just want to nick it for the Chromecast. So he just gave me the whole thing to like because we couldn't really exchange things properly i think you should take the controller out and then put that right next to your ouya on your mantelpiece that will look lovely i have a yeah you'll have nice a collect- little i mean if we can get a, a an on live uh, up what? there as well that you have a nice collection as well so i can I have, have all three somewhere. of them <laughs> we've had this conversation you two have still got yours i think i gave mine away because uh, i lived in uh, gosport where the internet is terrible <laughs> Or was at the time. See, the thing was useless. I've now just got an image of someone living in Gosport who can't work out why his on life won't connect because he's not aware that the service is shut down. Yeah, probably that. I'm talking about when the thing was given to me. So, 2012. I remember that. I remember that. Tim Tim gave us work gave word that there was free electronic goodies in your thing, so we mobbed the on live stand. Nice. Good times. Good times. So, have you brought anything to show and tell, Cole, man? Uh, no, no, no. It's been a pretty dull week for me. Um, How's the bruise on your head doing? All that's good? gone. That's, um, yeah, the, no, the lump's that's, gone. That's your head. The, that lump the bruise on your head is your stopped head. hurting yesterday, so. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. Good. But no, I, I've got no new exciting technology show off. I've, I'm still happy with my, my Xbox. Uh, the PS5 raffle that, curries were doing they emailed me to say nope you don't get one <laughs> apparently amazon are due to get stock in at some point i hear they've they've had stock notifications going off all week so of smith so of uh game argos still give them away at two in the morning for some reason it's uh, yeah I'm, I, I'm at this point i'm just waiting till i can get one from curries because essentially um yeah just mine just better for you. I've got this thing, I've, I've spoken about some uh, on mm-hmm. the podcast a bunch of times, but there's a scheme through work, you get the voucher, and mm-hmm. then they take it out over time uh, of your pay over 12 months, and there's no interest yeah. on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've had mine, my voucher for this queued up since uh, launch, so I'm halfway play, uh, paid off of my PlayStation 5 that I don't own uh, at nice. this point. So I think I'll just wait for the uh, the, the curries. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a better plan. <laughs> but I mean, it is insane the delays. I mean, like, because with, I mean, the big one was PC graphics cards as well, and I don't know how the hell I was lucky enough to to to, to grab a, a a thirty series RTX. I just happened to be browsing at the right moment, it seems. But they're actually like the kind of the interim model. So like it goes like usually alongside say the thirty eighty they'll eventually release a thirty eighty ti that's like the fancy pants version of it that isn't the full fat thirty ninety the sports edition yeah. exactly it's the one that go faster stripes um, 
But it looks like before some retailers have been able to fulfill the back orders that they still have from the launch of the damn thing in November or whenever it was, the 3080 Ti is going to be released. So people who have not yet had their pre-order for the previous version of it, the new version of it is going to be released before they get theirs, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. I still blame scalpers because they're gits. That won't help. I saw you complaining this week, Coleman, about scalpers um, hiking up the price of the PS4, oh, no, the PS5 that, uh, charging dock. Yeah, the dock official things. charging dock. That's that's yeah. been that's been a problem since the the launch of the PlayStation Five. Um, people, I literally, been... I, I gave up trying to buy one. I got bored and just bought the Venom one, and that matches my Xbox one anyway. So. I've gone to okay. um I've gone to shop two in the end because what what happens is these things are worth twenty four ninety nine and people buy them and sell them for sixty seventy eighty pounds on eBay. Uh, they are sold out absolutely everywhere. Uh, yeah. Shop two, if you buy from there, they will charge you just the the RRP and then sh- ship it to you when they do eventually get them in stock. So that's the way I went. Um, but this wasn't scalpers. This was. Amazon, uh, they put up a notification going, we've got the charges in stock. And then you went on there and it was 64 quid. <laughs> Although that can <laughs> be insanity. party sellers via Amazon. Yeah. Was it, was it no. fulfilled by and stopped by Amazon? It wasn't down as, um, it wasn't down as the warehouse thing. Um, wow. It was like straight on there, straight on the page, not uh, see all buying options or anything. So Because some, you can sometimes get stuff which looks like it's sold by Amazon, yeah, but it isn't. But yeah. it really no, is. I, I, I get it. But, but this one... Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good, but I yeah. In the end, I just went through the the thing, getting a charger for a console I don't yet have. <laughs> Man, there are some ugly ass ones that you can get instead of though. Well, the thing is, the the whole point of the official one is um, it it uses the rather than you th- use the USB C connection, it uses the nice little connection. You just drop it into the charging station, and it it works. And I think the Venom one does the same. Um, but most of them out there are just glorified USB-C chargers that you stick in and risk breaking. Well, okay. The, the, this one, yeah, it's got the Venom one's got a cradle thing. It's got like a an adapter that you have to stick into the PS5 pad itself, but then it you can just rest oh, it on the cradle. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not as elegant as I'd like, but it's not too bad. Like it's the weight of the thing on top doesn't really add That's anything like the, to the um, pad particularly. The, so. the, PS4 a while ago, they, there was these unofficial charging pad that was released. And then when you bought it, what they didn't tell you was there was a thing that you had to plug into your place, your dual sen- uh, DualShock 4 controllers and then drop those on the pad and then align it just right. So it was pointless having this charging pad because it was so finicky. And in the end, yeah. it ruined the um, charging port of the controller anyway. So all yeah. I, all I, I, I would so say, I'm the official just um, nipped on to Amazon, other tax avoiding um big box <laughs> sellers are available um not the, many though <laughs> no um the um the one that you can buy on amazon for 70 quid is actually sold by shop to direct <laughs> mm. so shop to well, that was um, yeah. That, that well, that dun, was how it dun, that dun, was how dun, it dun. appeared yesterday. It wasn't down a shop two yesterday. This is a the big sold twist. by damn it, Coleman. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I'm I'm back ordering. So there you go. <laughs> Fair enough. But they've got them, Coleman. They want to. They just want to. I could get it by Saturday. I could have it in my sweaty little hands. Not for it wouldn't be pounds, much good though. to you, though, would no, it? No, no, but, Damn, you know, really? I just kind of on point of principle just wouldn't wind Just up. taunt Coleman with it. <laughs> <laughs> I have more money than cents, and I've only got 50 quid to my name. Well, it's fine. I, uh, it's, it's a thing that will be ready for when I have a console, and it's a thing that my girlfriend will be able to use. So just put it off to the side in the living room we can drop our controllers on there and it doesn't like if you connect your controller to someone else's console then it syncs with that console and it's just a regular charging station that we can both use at the same time so nice little thing i thought sounds yeah. like the gateway to cohabiting bliss yeah yeah like, like <laughs> buying a girlfriend a playstation 5 when you really really want one <laughs> Uh, so anyway, what we've done played, we're far too far into the show before we talked about this. 
Um, but Tim, I see you've got something that you've been playing on Game Pass. Yes, yes. And to add to my Game Pass adventures last week, I still didn't get to play Prey because there was a game I was looking forward to. I'm also going to, yeah, it's Empire of Sin is the game before we go too much further. And, and yeah, it's a kind of uh, turn-based uh, strategy game with some real-time elements to it as well, um, where, yeah, you're... So both turn-based and real-time? Well, it's turn-based in combat, but there's real-time elements to the open-world area and what's going on and earning money and all that type of stuff. In a, in the kind of... Um, it reminds me of a mashup of a real-time strategy and a Sim City-type game. Um, and you are kind of building an empire of different criminal organisations by taking over different speakeasies or opening yeah. up different like uh, other venues like brothels and yeah. um, you've got like your kind of main safe house which is your kind of main uh, go to but and you can sort of develop some uh what is it produce uh barrels of like different liquors and stuff to supply your speakeasies yeah. uh but then you can also build like bigger bigger breweries for doing that as well basically say so what now well, I said bigger, breweries. Bigger what? I said breweries. Bigger what? I'll just say it again. I just want to hear you say bigger breweries. Bigger, bigger breweries. breweries. Yeah, and again. But I think keep saying actually... it. Keep saying it. Bigger breweries. Bigger breweries. No, because they're, they're not called breweries in the game. They're called depo- depositories, I think. Suppositories? Depositories. Oh. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because I don't remember. I talked about this game a while ago. I was interested in it before it was released. Um... It's Romero Games, which I think, if I'm correct in saying, it's headed up by uh, Brenda Romero, but I think her husband is also involved as well, possibly. Um, but I think it's mainly sort of her company and her thing, basically. Um, and yeah, like I-, I talked about it a while ago because this was a game that I was interested in buying, but was pretty sure would come to Game Pass or PlayStation Plus at some stage. And it came to Game Pass pretty quickly. <laughs> um I'm pleased about that. Like, I, I think I'm, I did well to actually play it on Game Pass and, and kind of get through it and play a bit and, and kind of form a more definite opinion. I'm kind of glad I didn't pay full money for this game, but at the same time, I'm glad I got to play it. So it's a really good kind of thing to actually get on Game Pass. Um, the elements of the game I really like. Like, I really quite like the combat. It's a bit easy when you're playing and you're in control of your own gangsters and it can be but it can be a lot harder when you don't have your like main characters involved in the fights and you're just using guards to defend against an attack from an enemy uh faction that is attacking your one of your locations basically so you've got to actually increase the security in each one of those areas so you've got enough guards to fend off those attacks if you are going to war with other factions and yeah there's a lot there's a lot to the game, basically. I have There's a question. A real, yep. Why can't we all just get along, Tim? <laughs> it, it is much more beneficial to your finances if you are not at war with anyone at any time, basically. So, so like, just chill, man. Just, yeah, like, yeah, just it, hug, it, hug it, it out. It, it, there are times when you're like, okay, I need to start taking over more properties of that uh, gang that I'm... I've got this arrangement with, but I'm going to have to break that arrangement so I can attack them um, because I want to take over their location and stuff like that. But if you're at war with too many people at once, like, and spread yourself too thin, it's really easy to, for that to like completely burn through all your money and resources and uh, uh, really harm your ability to earn more money. Basically. I have another Uh, question. Yes. War. (laughs) Huh? What is Ooh. it good for? <laughs> uh, not absolutely nothing. It's really good for overtaking other territories and basically That's kind of if the you purpose are, of war, really, to be fair. If you if you've you can uh, have different packs and different arrangements and different business arrangements with other gangs. And if you've got like a business arrangement or a pact in place, you can't attack any of those locations. Whereas otherwise you can and if you attack them and take them over, it's cheaper than just uh, booting up a derelict business if you want to keep the business in the form it's in. So if you attack a speakeasy, you can just uh, raise it, you can uh, 
to like just go in and smash stuff up like and your just microphone. to like your microphone. Yeah, just yeah, just to disrupt <laughs> uh, um other gangs and other you know their their chances of earning money. But the best thing to do when you're going uh, go in and uh, win, are successful in combat at taking over a building uh, is that you just can take it over and if you turn it into the same thing it was, it doesn't cost you any money at all, basically. Um, so if you ta- overtake a speakeasy and just want it to be a speakeasy, it costs you no money. But if you want to make it a hotel or a casino, it will cost you more money to to actually change it over. Oh, I have a question. But, yep. Do you need to deal with the local council and get planning permission? No, but you do have to bribe local cops and keep them kind of on your side Fair enough. without like kind of buddying up to them too much because then other gang members get suspicious of you as well, I think, kind of thing. Or that's been hinted at. I haven't seen that in play yet. And they're nothing they're nothing more than a lot of talk and a badge. <laughs> but wow. yeah, there's there's From a lot the mean to like streets of Uxbridge. There's Colin, a lot to like Coleman with some real talk. You can zoom in and out of the map and go from one view that's kind of like in the zoom, the most zoomed in view, you've got like a view of the actual characters and the actual location you're in and some of the detail of what that is and the other people in that location. If you zoom out a little bit, you get like a, a it comes more of a map view than a world view. Um, and it you can kind of, it, it color codes the different buildings so you know which gang they belong to and stuff like that. And it makes it a bit easier to see like a neighborhood. And then you can pull out even further and see, and it kind of gives you a bit less detail, but you can pull out further and then see the like um, a bigger chunk of the world and, and kind of get a, an overview at the same time. Truly revolutionary map technology in that game. Revolutionary. You zoom out and you zoom out. Everything else is generally controlled through menus, and there are oh, a hell of a lot of menus. Oh, no. um, but there's a hell of a lot of depth to all these things as well, and kind of you have to make sure that you're producing the right quality of liquor that the people in your neighborhood want, otherwise you'll get less money. And you need to make sure you're producing the right type of liquor and delivering the right type of liquor and all this type of stuff. But a lot of it is controlled through spreadsheets. And this sounds a lot like my job. It's yeah, that's the, that's the thing. That, that's the, one of the things, things I don't like about it is a, there is a bit too much of controlling stuff through spreadsheets and a, everything's quite complicated. It does a very good job of kind of talking you through that the first time. But if you need to kind of recap things or you're going back to something a few days later that it started explaining and then you kind of moved away to something else, like it can it can be a bit easy to get lost. It'd be nice if you could repeat those tool tips a little bit and stuff like that, but I haven't found a way of doing that. But Do you have a friendly little paper clip who can help you out in such situations? You've got a little guy in the corner no. that might as well be clippy, but it's a little gangster dude that gives you just advice. And I don't know where he comes from or how he fits into the story Cl- at all. Clippy sounds like a not unreasonable gangster name, to be fair. Yeah, yeah a little clippy. Is this just Prohibition Manager 2021? Nice. Right. Yeah, it, it is. But like, as I said, the graphical stylings of it and stuff are a bit nah. simplistic, but kind of on a sort of x commie type level. And, you know, it kind of... It suits, Commies? It suits, it's, not, it's not too bad. Um, and yeah, like I, from a graphical standpoint and stuff, it does. That's all okay. It's got a, a kind of very nicely designed UI and everything feels like uh, well well th- thematically tied with the you know the 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 theme of the game and uh, like you know it's it's very 1920s gangster uh you kind of as i said there's a timeline to it as well and i literally went through a year and you you know it announces the year that you kind of does that in a very kind of art deco styly um yeah. and kind of yeah it's it, it it's it's nicely presented and there's stuff there but as i said there's a bit too much depth to it. I think it could have benefited from having a few things thinned out. And I find a few things a bit tricky, like just moving all your gang members in one place at one time should be a bit more intuitive. Like it, the amount of times I've accidentally moved one gang member on their own or just my gang boss rather than my whole gang. And I'm like, why would I ever want to do that? That sounds like a terrible idea, basically. Um, Yeah, but... and. As I said, it's, there's a lot to it, and it kind of you get into it, and it, it's it it can be quite difficult because it, especially at first you like you don't know why you're not earning money, <laughs> and and you kind of got to dig through a lot of menus to find out like okay, I'm 
I'm that upkeep is there and I'm not earning through that and that's the wrong type of liquor so I need to do that and it's just yeah it can be a, a bit fiddly it, it's good when you get into it a little bit but then there's yeah as I said there's elements of it I really like and uh, the combat and stuff that means that I'll probably stick with it a bit longer but the stuff that I already find, like, as I said, it feels a bit too much like work is literally like one of the things I was going to say at times. It feels a bit too much like you're sitting down and doing profit and loss sheets and working things out and running a business. And I understand that was some of what it was going for, but I think it stepped a little bit further away from just making sure it was an enjoyable game first and foremost, basically. Um thing it could do with some simplification. This was in my Game Pass queue, but after all this, you've successfully talked me out of deleting it and going straight to Octopath Traveler instead. <laughs> That's a shame, because as I said, there are good things to see here. If you like your turn-based strategies and stuff, like it's it's quite good. And it's I think if you do get into the game, there's quite a lot of replayability in terms of like the bosses and their relationships with the other gangsters that you hire and stuff like that. And there's interrelationships between those gangsters, who they'll be prepared to work with and who they work well with and not and stuff like that. Also, Coleman, yep. spreadsheets. Also spreadsheets. spreadsheets. But yeah, I mean, like, I'd be interested to give it a go and, and see what you think. But yeah. Um, spreadsheets. As I said. I like Gangster it. spreadsheets. Right. I, yeah, I like it, but I don't love it at the moment. But I am going to stick with it for a bit longer and play a bit more of it too, because yeah, I've enjoyed bits of it that I've played so far. Right. Splendid. So that's Empire of Sin. It's available on Game Pass and other platforms. And uh, if you want to get Capone, here's how you get it. He pulls a knife. You pull a gun. He pulls one. Puts one of yours in the hospital. You send one of his to the morgue. Oh, that's God. the Chicago no. way. One open-handed slap. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> This is what happens. Oh, by the way, this week, if if you realise, if you're wondering why your ears aren't bleeding as much as usual, it's because yes. Coleman can't well get his soundboard to work, which means he's now falling back on his good old crutch of accent. I I forecast that we're about twenty minutes away from a bang. Oh no, it's working. I think I got it oh, working. You got it working. Damn it. <laughs> good. God damn it. Good. Good. Anyway. I'm going to take me and my standard dong elsewhere. Yeah, it's, I am. You've unleashed his powers again. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so, so I cannot be stopped. Head. So, Coleman, in uh, what is increasingly becoming your uh, your version of what Destiny is to me, uh, Marvel Avengers. Yeah, Marvel Avengers. Didn't it get its fancy pants, frame rate, super sexy update as well? Yes, it's available on PS5 and Xbox Series S uh, and X. And do you know what? Um because I can't play the PlayStation 5 version of this game, I really wish they did a Destiny and did a cross-save type thing, because I would totally rebuy this game and play it on the Xbox instead. Um, oh. And then just move it back when oh, I could play on PS5. Oh, how you mocked me back in the day. You mocked me. It's a shame. Um, but yeah, there's there's been a whole roadmap that they've put out uh, lately and gone, which we spoke a little bit about last week. There's the Battle for Wakanda, which is Gotta the, love a roadmap. Yeah, I'll which was roadmap. meant to be... It was meant to be available now but unfortunately it, uh, it it was meant to be available and then um uh chadwick boseman passed away so they decided to put the uh, the dlc further back and instead go for the whole uh, the the hawkeye uh, dlc instead so we were meant to get kate bishop black panther and then hawkeye instead we got kate bishop hawkeye and then black panther and it's a bit weird because that's two archer characters back to back and not a lot of people have been very excited about that however um the I, I've now played through both of those campaigns, and one is in, the introduction of Kate Bishop and setting up the events to Hawkeye storyline, and then the other one is playing Hawkeye storyline, and it's got a kind of alternate timeline future stuff where the Hulk becomes Maestro and uh, the Kree have invaded Earth, and Ooh. it's all very very cool. Um, if you have Avengers and you are looking to jump back into it, this is content worth playing. You've got two extra characters. They are both very fun. Um, Kate Bishop has these whole uh, uh, kind of teleport ability as well as her archer abilities, whereas Hawkeye is a bit more proficient in his uh, uh, archery abilities and can do things like... Uh, he's got quite a zippy little like arrow grapple hook thing that he uses that's really fun to mess around with. And yeah, it's... Uh, it's great for the characters alone. The story, not that long. I think it adds like four or five hours to the game in total if you just go through the two of them in one hit. 
Um, if you're looking for a reason to pick this up, it's not really probably going to sell you on this game, although a lot of people have been going back because of the PlayStation 5 uh, and Xbox pat, uh, versions of the game being released. So if you can get one of those, I recommend going into it for the, the improvements. I've been looking at a lot of videos and pouring at the screen like a cat trying to get in at dinner. It's just so pretty, and I want to play that version of the game, and I can't, and I'm stuck with three-minute loading screens that get reduced to 10 seconds. And <laughs> you could play it in your house, no? Uh, I can't, because my girlfriend's um, playing that one. So I'm if I... sure if you ask nicely, Coleman. Yeah, I know. well, no, here's the problem. If you transfer your uh, save data over to the new versions of the game, you can't then transfer it back. So yeah. I can't go around, mess okay. around on it and go, like, I could do it just to have a little mess about and see how the improvements are, but then I wouldn't be able to put it back on the PlayStation. So it's just a bit pointless at the moment for me. Um, but yeah, all that stuff looks impressive. There's new stuff coming in the future. There's a whole, uh, there's a special event they're doing where there's a whole, uh, uh, because of the, the advent of alternate futures and stuff that brings in multiverse theory and all that. And there's going to be an event where you can actually play with, you know, a team of four Iron Men or a team of two Hulks and two Black Widows, whatever you want. So that's coming soon. Uh, for a story-based mission. There's also some Red Room DLC coming and, uh, yeah, some stuff with the Tesseract looks all pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to this. I have a question. Finally, one day, Spider-Man will come to the game and I will be happy. Uh, I have, question, I have two questions. Yeah. Question the first. Mm -hmm. Why does the skin for Hulk make him look like a gore on Out of Zelda? I don't know. What, you what know skin that, you, you know, like the big round... Rock, rock munching. Yeah, I know what Gorons are. What, what, what skin are you looking at? For I'm that? looking at. There's one where he's a bit beardy. Oh, is that the that is, that's Maestro? That might be Maestro. Yeah. Oh, is that Maestro? My apologies. Is he got like a a whole fryer tuck bald thing? Oh yeah, there we go. Well, I'm yeah. wrong there. That's Maestro. He looks like he does look like a Gorom. That's Hulk in the future. He doesn't transform back to Bruce Banner and retains the the same intellect as Bruce Banner, so he just becomes a super bad guy. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, question the second. Mm -hmm. I still can't shake the suspicion yeah. that this is going to go free to play at some point. I think it might in the future, um, but I keep seeing so many deals on, and with the, the whole idea of upgrading from the old console versions, I keep seeing it so cheap on the Xbox and the PlayStation that it is worth dropping into if you want to play this game, if there's enough there to capture your interest overall. Um, but yeah, it could go free to play down the line, but at the moment, as it stands, the only thing they sell are cosmetics, which I know a lot of people have problems with, or uh, hero cards as well. But without those, there's a lot to get into, and you can earn premium currency in the game uh, to a degree which I've used to buy a lot of premium skins and stuff, and then they reduced them, and I got very angry because <laughs> I put a lot of time into getting mm -hmm. that premium currency. So, hey-ho. Um, but, yeah, it might do, but I don't think it sold very well, so I can't see them getting rid of a reason to make money out of this game when they give away the you know, give away the expansions and the levels and all that kind of stuff and characters. But, yeah, it's still fun. Uh, apparently it plays a lot better on, on current gen. And I hope to oh. do so myself one day. Mm. Oh, and current, right, yes. I misunderstood what you meant by current gen. Mm. And I, I think you can cross-play PS4 and PS5 and Xbox Series and uh, Xbox One. But okay. I can imagine that being quite frustrating. Because like when me and Bleezy were playing through uh, uh, Ghost Recon, on, uh, he was playing backwards compatibility through PS5 and I was playing on the PS4 Pro. And it would spawn him into a mission and then spawn me about 10 seconds after him. And then by that time he's run off down the, down the what way. You need, and what you need, young fellow, my lad, is a super sexy drive. I do you need a need. super sexy drive. Uh, but super yeah, I've sexy. seen the, the improvements on load time, especially are ridiculous with the, the Avengers game. And I can imagine if you're playing with someone that they've done half the flipping mission and you're still looking at slow motion, Iron Man pulling poses while you wait for the loading to finish. So but yeah, really oh, good game. Still having Tony fun with Stark it. Stark is a scamp, isn't he? It's uh, it's currently I'm juggling between that and Sea of Thieves, and those those are two games that I shouldn't be juggling. <laughs> yeah, Val Valheim has seriously got its claws into me. But every I'm time I want to play Valheim, I, that game. every every time I think, oh, I'll jump into Valheim and do that, I go, yeah, but Sea of Thieves. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
So uh, anyway, that's all we've done, played. And he has a quick look at the time and sees it's getting on. But there is some news! There are some news. Purchases and name changes a go-go this week, Coleman. So this first one is quite close to your heart, I understand. Why would that be? Why would that be? Uh, or is it closer to Tim's heart? One of the two of you. I, I think it's really closer games. to... Um, no, I think it's closer to John Brady's heart, and you might be mixing me and him up. <laughs> well, that could happen. <laughs> no, uh, this this I think actually happened. They, I think it. they announced this like half an hour after we finished recording last week, but Sony's purchased uh, Evo, the, the eSports uh, fighting tournament, which is odd. Didn't see that yeah, coming. Um, did not see that one coming. As Sony kind of have a first party partnership, or they had with um, Street Fighter V, I don't know if they'll do that with the next version of Street Fighter going forward, kind of makes sense. I tell you what you're not going to see a lot of in future Evos, though. Super Smash Brothers. (laughs) Well, I mean, so people have asked, and they haven't got any answer on the whole Smash Brothers thing, and Nintendo were never that keen to have Smash Brothers represented on Evo in the first place. They didn't allow it for a long time. It was sort of unofficial uh, 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 competition stuff back, you know, on event premises. And then at some point they allowed it. And then I think last year there was a whole thing about esports players, especially in the Smash community, being uh, doing some dirty behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So who knows going forward what the hell is going to be going on with this um all we know is this year there is going to be another digital uh live stream version of evo to to enjoy uh which takes place between the 6th and the 8th and the 13th and the 15th of august um and then we'll have to see what happens going forward but yeah there may be a lot more presidents on stuff available on the playstation compared to what's available to say just the xbox the pc or the uh the switch Mm. or switch pro by that point who knows I don't. No idea, mate. Lots of rumours about that this week, but mm. still unsubstantiated. Mm-hmm. I don't see the major benefit, but okay. I I just I'm not associated with that esports world as much as others, and I really don't get why PlayStation bought Evo, but hey, maybe there is some major thing to this that I am just missing. I mean, maybe they've got a plan, that, as you say, maybe they've got big plans for Street Fighter VI. Maybe they've got big plans for other fighting games after that. Um, who or, knows? Do you know what I reckon? This is the way that they're finally going to get their return on investment for uh, for, um, for Sazba. This is they're going to enforce that the the main stage, the you know the big ticket event that's got to be PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale is what it's going to have to be. <laughs> that's what i reckon the whole the whole thing and they're just going to try and ram that game down people's throats until they accept it as an acceptable fighting game yeah but you know I'm not, what i'm not sure they're gonna no. have far with that that game came out and i think i booted it up once on the ps3 to go there it is and otherwise that was a vita only game for me but that game i put a lot of hours into playstation <laughs> all stars battle royale because that became my commute game just constantly playing that because at the time you know, handheld Smash Brothers, which eventually came to 3DS before the Switch was a thing, you know, it wasn't something you could do. So this was the yeah. closest thing to that. There's a novelty yeah. for you, hey? I really but, enjoyed it at the time. But do you think this could, this could hint towards further implications? Like, do you think Sony might be about to buy Capcom or, you know, somewhere down the line or something like that? Or... I don't. Just wondering, because mm. um, as you say, it's just e- buying Evo is a strange move unless it's part of a bigger plan. I would have thought, like, well, there were there were rumors of a of a Microsoft uh, acquisition of Capcom, but this was before they released um, the before Xbox seemingly started buying every company under the sun. Um, but also, this was before Monster Hunter World and Resident Evil Two remake coming out, which just pure, proved to be massive sellers for uh, for. Capcom, so they're in a much better position than they were uh, five years ago. Um, and and so it's, it maybe sounds not. Like Monster Hunter Rise is doing absolutely gangbusters in Japan. Someone, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Apparently, actually, like, even... there were some companies who actually gave their employees the day off to play Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> so <laughs> we all know you're going to be buying it, and you're all going to be sneaking your, your switches into work to do it anyway. So just have the day off. That's not unusual with certain series of games. They do offer that uh, in Japan compared to to the UK. 
<laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a country that understands video games. Mm. But hey. Uh, but it's not the only... Uh, so, well, Sony purchasing Evo. We'll see what that is, part of a, part of a grand yep, plan. Yep. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be them trying to muscle their way in a bit more firmly into the esports. Esports in general. Goodness. Yeah, it could just be that. But Xbox Live is having an identity crisis, Coleman. Yeah, what is this all about? Well, bef- I mean, before we go into this properly, so Xbox Live is now called Xbox Network. Don't and like it. You didn't decide to tell anyone. I mean, I, like, I don't I like it. Did. Change well, your back. Be- before we kind of get into the weeds like on this it. one, I, d- I do want to point out, just by the amount of people... This is worse than putting the clocks forward. I don't like it. Just the amount of people that go on Twitter and go, oh, I remember Xbox Live first. I've got this disc... I've got this disc yeah. to allow me into Xbox Live back in the day. It's like, there are too many hoarders in the, the video game community. Like, who's keeping that? Uh, Tim's um, only but... got five of them, I'd imagine. <laughs> I probably have got one. Somewhere. There we go. See, There's... point made. Um, but it was weird because it wasn't that long ago. There was like this huge price hike for Xbox Live Gold. And mm. then seemingly remove less than 24 hours later and revert it on. Um, and everything seems to be kind of driving towards let's use Game Pass Ultimate instead of Xbox Live Gold. But renaming Xbox Live to Xbox Network, one, a little bit confusing, PlayStation Network. Uh, but two, and that must really, really annoy the the kind of fanboys on that side. But uh, to be so, fair, it doesn't take much to annoy fanboys on either side of anything. But Xbox Live Gold is still a thing. Yeah. Mm. Which is very confusing. Yeah. So I think it's I, I think it's probably because they wanna I'd imagine it's gonna become part of a wider media offering, whether or not they're gonna offer deals or tie-ins with streaming partners and by uh, or stream video partners but I, I don't just mean like the twitches etc of the world i mean microsoft already had their fingers burnt with mixer with that but in terms of like um hbo max that kind of stuff whether or not the the the, the xbox it's going to become xbox ultimate pass rather than xbox game pass ultimate i'm wondering if they might be moving towards that well, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but on that sort of note as well, like Xbox have been really heavily sort of pushing Disney Plus and having a crossover promotion with them with the whole Falcon Winter Soldier and uh, that sort of promotion. Falcon? Um, the Falcon, Falcon, Winter, Vul- Sol- Vulcan Winter Soldier. Huh? <laughs> Spock Not Vulcan. And, Falcon. Spock Falcon. and Bucky. <laughs> Falcon. 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 Yeah. Falcon. Falcon. Um, but yeah, Falcon. That, that's Falcon. that's kind of how I got Falcon. into Disney Falcon. Plus. Was uh, I was using Ultimate, and then it just went, "Hey, you get a month of Disney Plus." I went, "Ooh, I'll have I'll have me some of that." Thank you yeah. very much. Disney Plus is good times. A, it's a decent yeah, service, yeah. and I've stuck with it. Um, but anywho, it yeah, there's there's kind of interesting brand deals going on. But the I think it was the Verve that originally uh, they reported on the name change, and from a statement from Microsoft, the idea behind the name changes was they were going to be updating the service in certain ways to kind of keep in line with this new name change. And Mm. uh, the first of that is a couple of days later, they've said that do you no longer need Xbox Live Gold to access party chat, looking for groups, or free-to-play multiplayer features on Xbox. Oh, that's interesting. So so what is Xbox Live Gold for then? Is it just getting access to the free games? That's it? Yeah, three, three games a month. Yeah, so surely that's going to be renamed at some point as well, because it doesn't make any sense to have the word live in that. Or gold, and, actually. Yeah, <laughs> or gold doesn't it. really make It's going to be, yeah, it's like sense. Xbox Game Pass Rubbish Edition, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Edition. Xbox Game Pass for keepsies. <laughs> well, I can pretty much, I mean, the way I could see it going forward is they go, right, once we've stopped working with Xbox One at all, and it is just the Xbox series of uh, the family of Xboxes, uh, then that's the point. They go, right, it is just Game Pass. And it's network yeah. is the internet, network is free, and then yeah. you go Game Pass, and then you go Game Pass Ultimate to include whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And it kind of removes it. I mean, cloud. to be fair, Xbox Network is a lot more self-explanatory than Xbox yeah. Live anyway. You have to explain yeah. what Xbox Live is to someone that's never heard of it before, basically. It's so, a very 2000s name. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Makes sense to absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then the other news on that, and interestingly, I, 
I can't remember which show I was listening to, but there was a podcast talking about, hey, um, because of the discontinuation of communities on PlayStation, uh, Sony should really look into purchasing or at least using uh, Discord on the PlayStation 5 in some form. Mm -hmm. And then not one day later, it says, Microsoft looking to acquire... Uh, Discord for a room of ten billion dollars. That is a scary ass ton of money, right there. That's a yeah. Again, and you mentioned the mixer thing. There was a lot of money thrown at mixer to not even have it up for what was it a year before they took it down. Well, what's really interesting in the background is because I I mean I think we'll agree Discord is an incredible service. It's really very well put put together, but they they consciously taken a step back from making it gaming focused in their messaging quite re- quite recently yeah cuz um discord uh, well initially they they were i mean they are still technically a games launcher but they put a marketplace on here to buy video games and stuff with and i believe the market's kind of been fizzled out in the background but it's still technically a launcher to play any of the games you you purchased through um discord but I, yeah, it's it's kind of going the way of Twitch before the um, the Amazon acquisition, where that was purely let's watch people play video games, and now it's chat shows and Bob Ross paintings, and I think wrestling is on there, and all all kinds of stuff. Well, but I think Discord, the, it kind of it took the focus off it being about a, a place for video game communities to hang out. Kind of around the time, well, it was early on in the pandemic when the, I think they kind of went, oh, we want a bit of this this kind of Zoom goodness coming our way. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm not sure that, and that kind of, I, I, I'm not. It removed its unique selling. Yeah, it kind of. Kind of point. No? Yeah, it kind of made made it a slightly, even though nothing really changed on one level, somehow it made it feel like a less fun place to be. It's like, I don't really want to hang about in a kind of Microsoft Teams clone for my chill out time. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's a bit weird does seem well a lot more stable can... than Teams though, from my experience of work. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it does, it does, uh, yeah, it does fill me with a bit of dread. The fact that Microsoft are taking over a bit because we all moved away from Skype after Microsoft took it over and after it got progressively worse through through the, all their upgrades and got more annoying to use. And we kind of all jump shipped and went to Discord because it was a better product and easier and catering to gamers. And No, we, we jumped to Discord because Dan one said, day said, we have to use Discord. We are using well, Discord for podcasts. Yep. <laughs> but I think we'll all agree that wasn't a terrible shout. No, I, no, I no, don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't miss uh, uh, Skype and its uh, the mandatory install apps and the updates that can take up to half an hour to install and its insistence on overtaking your uh, audio settings. So mm-hmm. when you do do something like record a podcast and it goes, "Hey, your level's at fifty percent. I'm going to put your mic input to a hundred percent right now and top out your uh, your audio for the rest of the show." Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Skype. Thanks, mate. I mean, Tim, bless him, does you do that all by yourself, don't you, Tim? You don't need Skype to do that for yeah. you. No, yeah, he just yeah, rocks yeah. back and That's forth fine. while he's talking. <laughs> but uh, no, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I think the kind of communications infrastructure underlying kind of gaming on Xbox has needed a bit of a refresh for a while. Yeah. So, it, you know, I can see as a kind of an infrastructure build, it makes a lot of sense for them. I mean, I don't know... I mean, to be fair, Microsoft have been pretty good about, you know, not using acquisitions to kneecap their opposition just yet. Whether or not they'll continue on in that ilk, I don't know. And we don't know if it's the Xbox division of Microsoft wanting to buy Discord or whether or not it's Microsoft as a whole wanting to yeah, buy Discord. Yeah, and it's, for, for it's the, for the, the If a value of $10 is being pounded about, it's almost certainly... The whole of Microsoft, though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at this point, it's a rumor. We'll see what happens going forward. I think, and and like this is one that just happens to have picked up a lot of steam, but it does seem like every other day there is a Xbox is buying this studio, this company, because that they've been on a spending spree of the last and they're also four yeah, there's probably so. got a lot of feelers out with a lot of different people at the moment. They might not buy all of them, but the rumors might not be you know, dishonest or, or inaccurate, they this might be like the fact that they're exploring a lot of options. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I don't know what what a Microsoft Discord world looks like, but um, <laughs> is that bad news for Skype? Like, why are they buying Discord if if they've Skype already got Skype? Is ba- Skype is bad news for Skype, mate. <laughs> yeah. um, but even though, I mean, I know um, Microsoft kind of put Mixer out of its misery, but they want to tell their uh, developers. Uh, <laughs> developer side of things because when I um I'd been messing around with my I've dusted off my old Microsoft developers license and then one of the first things you start doing when you mess around with the programmer side of an Xbox One is it goes hey uh, mixer features I'm like no 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 <laughs> what are you doing so I think they they put the, they must have implemented them at some point and gone oh yeah wow well, it's the Xbox One no one cares about it it's fine everyone's on the series now so hey ho. Mm. Mm. That's all the news. It is all the news. Oh, good. It, it is, is all, all the news. news. We actually managed to get through that in good-ish time. So I reckon I thought we so. ought to find out a little bit about what the community has been on about. But, Tim, do you want to tell us about Gosh first? Is there anything new about Gosh, or just people should continue playing the video games and giving money to a worthy cause? Yes, yes. Uh, geek out for Gosh. Uh, I think... I can't remember if they announced the final amount of sales that have been sold. I think I'd seen that somewhere, but I don't remember. billion! Figure, so I'll come back to that next week. But uh, yeah, anyone that hasn't seen or heard, uh, at Geek Out For Gosh is a campaign that we're helping to raise awareness for just to help raise money for Great Ormond Street Hospital. Uh, It's a really good cause. It's a good thing to do, especially at the moment, Um, and especially as some of their other avenues of money have dried up with the pandemic, but it's been an you know and their their costs and everything have probably gone up and the the need for uh, hospital places and stuff like that for kids uh hasn't diminished just because the pandemic's here as well um but yeah uh, basically if you want to seek out more information you can stream for yourself or just support some other people that are streaming you can stream pretty much any game uh and just raise money for the charity while doing it if uh, one thing i haven't mentioned for a few weeks but is still active if you raise over 250 pounds uh for you know as as doing your own stream uh you can actually get a a limited edition great ormond street t-shirt and uh, enamel badge both produced by insert coins so nice give them a shout they out make good insert stuff. coin i should say uh but yeah um yeah so give them a shout out they obviously make good t-shirts and good badges as most gamers know um but yeah they made a particularly limited edition one that you can get for raising uh 250 pounds for geek out for gosh great so yeah if you can sign up for that you can get some more details on uh, great ormond street's website search for geek out gosh on there or search for geek out for gosh the number four on twitter and other social media platforms uh and get some more information there um but yeah as i said if you don't fancy doing some streaming yourself you can just help support the other people that are either financially or just by helping retweet what they're doing and stuff like that as well so yeah uh, there will be more details on my twitter feed that you can see in the coming weeks uh but otherwise yeah go go seek out geek out for gosh and do what you can and dan is mocking me because i put up three fingers for four gosh Well done, Cole, man. We're an equal opportunities mm. podcast, so welcome. I swear that I swear that concussion's gone. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you really ought to see someone about that. Um, yeah, so uh, so I hear questions a go go from the community mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in Discord. So uh, hit me up with them, Cole, man. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Uh, the, we have had folks get in contact with us on the show, much like you can on our uh, various different forms of community feedback. You can do so via the comments section on BigRedBarrel.com. But also there we have a link to our Discord, which is a lovely place to go out and just hang out and chill and stuff, especially with the death of PlayStation 4 communities that we totally used and uh, didn't just set up and forget about. Or, no. How's the Xbox? How's Xbox Club doing as well? <laughs> hey, that it's still a thing. Uh, it mostly gets used in Forza, as far as I can work out. Yeah, I might start using that for Sea of Thieves. I, I noticed I could set up groups and stuff on it that I didn't know about. Um, okay, but also we are on Facebook and Discord at Big Red Barrel, and on YouTube at Big Red Barrel TV. Um, on Discord, these following fine folks have given questions for us. It's a question balooza. Uh, Pete has asked us, with the news of Sony buying Evo, what kind of effect do you feel this will have on the competitive scene, especially with having Smash Brothers as a main game on the schedule? I don't think Smash Brothers was ever a main uh, game on the schedule. In recent years, it's been uh, Dragon Ball Fighters that's 
kind of went up the chart mm. and uh especially when there was a, there was we were still allowed crowds and there was big crowd participation they were doing kami has and and uh, spirit bombs and stuff along with the game smash brothers had a, yeah, a, a brothers. lot of interest though yeah. for for years though no like yeah, it, it has had a lot been... of, but it, it, there was there were years where it was Street Fighter was your number one game. Yeah, and yeah. it's like Tekken Seven is your number one game, and then it went, oh, this is going to be a, there's a new Smash Brothers. This is going to be the year of Smash Brothers Ultimate is your main game, and it went Dragon Ball. <laughs> it was yeah, so yeah. weird. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, this is one of the reasons why I think it's a strange uh, decision to buy it in isolation of 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 some something else going on a bit because. I can only see this possibly backfiring. If this, if Evo goes badly now, Sony will be blamed for ruining this event or whatever. The I'm imagining, and we didn't really speak about it, but I'm imagining that Evo was probably suffering from not having their, uh, their events in person. There's not probably a good way that they can financially put on online events and have them highly viewed and make as much money i would have thought like they've got sponsors and stuff that they've probably still got arrangements with but i would have thought that not having the ticketed events would really hurt them this was probably a not necessarily a necessity but a a, a, you know a a financial um not quite necessity but a financial need to possibly do this because of you know the effect of covid on on their actual bottom lines and stuff so it in in some ways, this could, if Evo had gone away because of that, the competitive scene would be worse off, and Sony have done a good thing by supporting it. So it could just literally be that they came in to support something that otherwise would, possibly would have gone to the wall. Um, and in which case, that's a good thing for the competitive scene that's still around. I think it's a bit weird to have one platform holder in charge of something that's supposed to be a multi-platform event. Um, but as long as that manifests itself in Sony just saying multi-platform games should be played on uh, the place, you know, our PlayStation 5 or whatever it's available on, but other games can still be there, then I think that's fine. If they start saying it's PlayStation or nothing, then I think that's something that they might end up butting heads with and, and causing themselves and other people a few problems. But... I'm imagining they'll do the former rather than the latter there, I would have thought. I think much with the, for years now, constant rumoured death of E3 um, because of, uh, well, now because of pandemic, we're just going to have to see any kind of changes next year rather than this year because it's too soon to the acquisition. It's online only this year. So we'll have to see until the first major show of what could be happening and then possibly the following one to see how that goes going forward because the first big live one will always be a test bed. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I honestly have no idea. Evo's not my bag at all. Pazazba, Pazazba, more Pazazba. I would take a Pazazba too. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So Pazazba, number one fighting fan. Uh, Velvet Thunder says, "What is your favorite video? Uh, sorry, what is your favorite ending in video gaming?" Uh, I'm going for Bioshock Infinite. He says, "I was pr- surprised by the inclusion of the word infinite in that answer." Like, because I, you pronounce it, it infinite, infinite. No, but yeah. Bioshock. I would I would have thought was the much better answer of the two of the Bioshock games, kind of thing. <laughs> like, um, I, I, Bioshock Infinite kind of got me more in the emotional feels. I have to say, yeah. I don't I think, think it, I'm not I don't saying think it was it a bad was... ending. I'm just saying that Bioshock's original ending is you know the original Bioshock's ending is you know highly regarded yeah, yeah, in video yeah. games as being one of the greatest twists without going too spoilery I, for a game that's well, massively I, old but again without yeah. without spoiling the ending to Bioshock Infinite either I think the reason the ending is so popular was because when the game came out and it was before the reveal of the future DLC expansions there mm. was like this whole thing that was specifically built for the ending that was very impressive that got a lot of people excited and I think that is the reason people seem to resonate with it so much. It's really hard not to spoil that I know, right? Um, my favourite ending, again, no spoilers, even though it's an old game, uh, the first Red Dead Redemption. I so knew you were going to take that. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a good one. 
I'll actually go. That's with why one. I wanted to get in early because only you were going to take it. If I <laughs> was it, what it might have been a game that you and I played, Dan. That I think was one of my favourite endings ever. I, I'm struggling. I think it was Splinter Cell Conviction. Oh, was that the one that was yeah. the multiplayer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the co-op campaign, in that. Yeah, the, the end of the co-op campaign. Out of nowhere, it just goes right. You're both on opposite ends of a plane in a really small, tight area. And now you have to kill each other, yeah. basically. I was like, oh. Tim oh. won. Tim somehow won. I was trying to be too nice. Tim Tim with, the, <laughs> with his uh, wily street fighting ways from the mean streets of Finchley. Yeah. I think I snu- literally snuck up behind you and stabbed you in the back. But, yeah, it did know. a bit. <laughs> Get. I've, I've got... Uh, see, it's a toss-up. Um, it would either be Telltale The Walking Dead Season 1... Um, Again, won't spoil that game, but it's got a it's got a pretty gut punch kind of ending to it, and set shop nicely for season two, and then season two wasn't so good. But anyway, season one, great. Um, then the other one, just for kind of nostalgia value, is the ending to the Secret of Monkey Island. Oh, yeah, um, that's because a good job. specific, there's it, it's a point and click game, so it's uh, again very similar to uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead, but it's dialogue options that you pick to set up the ending, and there's like a point where after you defeated the big big bad and you've got your happy ending, it's like, there's one thing I've learned from this and then you pick your ending. And one of those is never spend more than $40 on a video game. And the other character's like, why did you say that? I don't know. It's like someone's been forcing me to talk this whole time. <laughs> and I, I really like that. So that can be the last thing you end the game on, which is uh, really cool. Nice. So there you go. Uh, have you two. completed Astro's Playroom yet? No, no. Okay. Okay. There's some stuff I'm holding back on for... Oh, I know how it ends. It got spoiled for me in the uh, Game of the Year discussions on Giant Okay, Bond, so let's not spoil it for other people, but yeah. that's quite cool. I like that. That's like almost post-ending, but yeah. It's a it's a good kind of nostalgic feel to that game. Um, and then Ed has said, with the Zack Snyder four-hour cut now existing... <laughs> that man is talking about Justice making League. a short movie, by the way. <laughs> uh, what games do you wish got another director's cut that nearly doubled the length of the game extra Ooh. points if it's not Mass Effect <laughs> oh well yeah um, Mass Effect Andromeda <laughs> but that's, no that's no why would you inflict universe. more of that on yourself Jesus oh uh, well, yeah but right but cut differently I'm assuming this will be like a different story as well and you know in the same vein as the Snyder Cut have you guys watched it yet by the way no no yes oh. Okay, yeah, I, well, I, I definitely the, preferred I, it. Good. Yeah, I, I did the whole thing in one sitting as well. And it, oh, the yeah, whole, we, di- we didn't. I didn't even do it in the same weekend. But, well, they, you know, they, hey. s- they split it into acts and the whole thing was, oh, yeah, yeah, so I could like watch it about an hour at a time. That's a total breach. And then I just watched the entire thing in one go. <laughs> Binge it. Um, <laughs> hmm. It's all right. I liked it, it. W- it still wasn't great, but it was a lot better than Justice League, which I thought was pants. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean... Oh, what I'm trying to think of a game that didn't outstay its welcome in some way. Like, but the problem is, it didn't outstay its welcome probably because it was it wasn't self indulgent enough to go to outstay its welcome. If you if you know that yeah, sentence yeah. came out really badly, but you know what I mean. Like, ooh, okay. Initially, uh, I was like, "Oh, Journey," but I was like, "No, actually, Journey was a perfect, Journey's a perfect length. Length. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Need and and while I loved it, I wouldn't necessarily want to spoil it by making it longer. I was going to say, what's her name? Obra Dinn. Return of the Obra Dinn, is it? The full title? I can't remember the whatever the rest of the title is. But that game I really enjoyed and couldn't couldn't replay without the story being different than it was the first time, basically. Do you know who you don't want to encourage by giving him an opportunity to double the length of his games? David Kaj. Can you imagine it's like you get to do a director's cut of Heavy Rain. It's like, oh Heavy my rain. God, this game lasts an entire week. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Can I have um, Beyond Two Souls and I want double the length of the Ooh. the bit where she goes to stay with the, the like Cherokee Indian tribe? Mm-hmm, <laughs> Just because mm-hmm. I know that will really annoy Ed. <laughs> 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 now, um, there's, in one of the Pokemon games, I think it's Gold and Silver, um, you once you've beaten the game, it basically takes you back to the first game and then you play it all over again with your new Pokemon and add mm-hmm. old ones in and stuff and face all the old gym leaders. 
and I really like that idea. So if we can have like every Pokemon game, once you've beaten it, you then go back to the uh, the previous game, then the previous game, then the previous game until like the latest Pokemon game is contained on seven Blu-ray discs. It <laughs> 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 t- takes you like a, m- a couple of months to beat. <laughs> It'll be great. All seriousness, uh, I think, um, and it's going to sound like a mic take, but Red Dead Redemption 2, which was a very, very long game to play you through the entire... You want that to be entire, twice as long? Well, yeah, it, it took a very long time to play that game, and I was, like, pacing myself in that game because I really enjoyed it and didn't want to burn out on it, and it took me over a year to beat the main campaign of it, but I would totally take more of that game just to keep it going because I, I didn't want it to end. I loved it so much. Tetris is mine. See, I was going to say that as a joke answer, but yeah. I mean, more people would have been worked to death if they extended the playtime of... Um, yes, of so that would very that. true. Yeah. Very allegedly, true. allegedly. The right. magic words that stop all lawsuits. Allegedly. Be- be- before we, we line ourselves up for slander, um, I think we're going to go. Um, so thank you for listening. Oh, sorry. I just thought of a good answer for that, though. Oh, okay. uh, Miles Morales. Cat-like reflexes, the, Tim. The what? latest Spider-Man. I would have liked that to be... Longer than it was. The length of Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that is a show. Coleman is having some drink to make his head less sore, which is probably not going to help the concussion. I'm fine. Um, mm. um, so anyway, we are going to go. So thank you for listening. As Coleman intimated earlier on in the show, make sure you head to BigRedBarrel.com where you will find a bit more of the general nonsense we peddle here. Uh, make sure you click on the link to our Discord and say hello to us there, because we, we like to hear from you, dear listeners, we do. Um, right. Yeah. I think all that's left is for uh, me to remind you, then, that I have been down. I might have been down. I have not been concussed. Yay! Do you think? What will you do Purple. if you don't remember this show either? Just be cussed. All right, then I'll go to the hospital. Good. (laughs) That is the correct answer. All right. Well, um, thank you ever so much for listening. And until next time, dear listeners, toodle bye. And if you're looking for salvation, well, you know you ain't going to find it in the Empire. ears are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard why not roll on over to bigredbarrel.com for more podcasts news reviews and videos from the biggest reddest site on the internet bigredbarrel.com uh i i i had a great day where uh, i went to make a coffee and a bottle of alcohol fell off the top of the shelf and landed on my head (laughs) <laughs> I did think your, your head was looking extra lumpy today. Oh, oh. There is a, a genuine divot. Look at that. Yep. Jesus.